Hello, I'm Steve. I'm an associate here uh, with TKB in Austin with uh, Austin here of Atlas Arms, here to discuss uh, his new project, the Dagny Dagger, among other things um, you know, related of interest to our community. So exactly, what is the Dagny Dagger in, in, in so many words? Yeah, um, so it's a, it's a new type of bullet, I might say even a cartridge, uh, which is developed in 9mm first. It is able to easily penetrate uh, body armor and is an, a new design that is superior for penetration of body armor, but it doesn't fall under, uh, purposefully, it doesn't fall under the definition of armor piercing as far as the ATF is concerned, so it's, it is legal to uh, manufacture and, and import, I suppose, uh, for uh, civilian sale. Hmm, very interesting. Um, so kind of going into it, could you just go a little further as to how this uh, new bullet and cartridge is manufactured? Because I think, as you might have alluded to a little earlier, with sure. the legality, there's some exotic materials uh, involved, and then yes. also there's like an interesting dichotomy of how like the jacket, like there's a jacket and penetrator, almost like a composite bullet, some might say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so maybe give a little more color on that. Sure. Uh, yeah, there's um, there's a, a core that's it's composed of an exotic alloy that, that does the penetrating, as you say. Uh, and then we have um, a polymer jacket uh, on, on the outside of that. And uh, those two are they're integrated, bonded together into a single projectile. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, as far as the, the manufacturing goes, the, the, the core is made, the jacket is made, and then the two are... are um, you know, bonded to get, you know, in, one inside the other. You know, in 2019, uh, 2018, I think I, I saw some announcements, 2020, yeah. why create the Dagny Dagger now, and especially in this time, and like, why, like, why should we have this, this capability? Yeah, yeah, so, you know, as far as like, my perspective is concerned, I want to do even more interesting things with, with Atlas Arms, and the Dagny Dagger was like the first place I thought mm. I could start. It might be like the easiest way I could get on this train, just kind of undermining state firearms regulations. Um, but specifically to the to the dagger, um, I believe in equality under the law. I mean, that's supposedly a you know a cornerstone of Western liberalism. Police privilege definitely exists, and I find it completely unacceptable that a certain caste uh, of people in our society are allowed to use the technology the rest of us aren't. And that is what the Dagny Dagger is supposed to uh, alleviate. Um, they can have AP ammunition. Now we're going to have AP ammunition. The idea of that, you know, we are all created equal, you know, endowed with certain rights by the creator. Yes. No matter whether you have a badge or whether you're a regular person or whether, you know, whatever your race, creed, color, nationality, we all have right. the same inherent rights. So, yeah, it definitely seems to be an admirable um, concept. Um, so going a little further, one of the things that I'm kind of interested in is so, could you give a little more explanation as to the path of the Dagny Dagger, where Atlas Arms, I think you mentioned, it's a research company. Could you explain how that was started and how that works, and then potentially how the transition to mass production or retail production would work with uh, the yeah. Dagny Dagger project? Okay, yeah. So, at this point, all we're doing is research and development of this new technology. At some point, we will also incorporate a for-profit corporation, and that will enable, you know, we, we want to, we're going to open source all this. We're going to make it so people can do it at home. But those who don't have the means or uh, don't want to make it at home, we're going to start a, a, a manufacturing branch to do it and sell it retail for them. Um, so, yeah, uh, that, that's kind of it. At, at this point, we're, we're developing the bullet first. Um, that's important. We're nearing the end of that. We're in the optimization phase. Uh, we're about to release a video. In fact, by the time you guys release your video, uh, we, we'll have uh, released a demonstration, you know, that it does penetrate armor. It works very well, but we're still kind of making it better. We want it to be the be very best it can be uh, when, when we're done with development. Um, then, at that point, that's when the manufacturing uh, comes in and we're going to develop a method to, to manufacture this new bullet because it's so different. Yeah. Than any other bullet, uh, we've got to spend some time and some money coming up for with a way to mass manufacture it. That'll take a bit, and then again, uh, eventually, um, you know, it'll be uh, released to the public. They can make it themselves, and we will start that that manufacturing operation. Very interesting. Very interesting. So, I think you've mentioned open source production. Mm -hmm. So, if you could go in a little more detail, so I know if there's some things that are proprietary, you can keep it under your vest. But like, how exactly would you envision people to be able to manufacture this ammunition open source? Because 
you know, you have like exotic exotic yeah. materials and a penet- and a penetrator. I think I heard something on a previous podcast about the involvement of the ghost gunner. So could you just kind of describe like how that process works? That that that's a big question mark I have. Yeah, personally. you know, I, I'm actually really excited to get into that. Um, you know, that that's kind of like the next a next step of our of our project. Um, but I'm I'm somewhat ready to talk about it. Uh, so, you know, two parts, we got the, the penetrator and the jacket, um, the jacket where it's looking really, really promising, uh, that that jacket can actually be printed, uh, 3d printed with an SLA printer. Uh, you can't do it with FDM, you know, the typical, you know, spit out ooze, uh, method because it's not accurate enough. Bullets are very precise, but I think we'd be able to do with SLA. So then people can print the jackets. And of course, then you, you've got the, the alloy core. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Dagen Dagger technology, you don't have to make it our special alloy to keep it, you know, to make it really high performance and to keep it legal. Uh, so then that's the idea. Uh, we've got another project coming to, to give lathe capability to the Ghost Gunner. Oh. So, uh, so yeah, so then, the you, you know, <laughs> exactly. So then you shove your, your, um, your rod stock into the spindle of the dagger and you'll have this tool center, uh, that we will, we will make and sell. Um, and, uh, and that can cut out, uh, just like a lathe would, that could cut your core for you. And, you know, you could dial down the performance and just make a copper core if you wanted to, though that wouldn't work as well. If you wanted to, you know, we can't do it because we have to stay legal. We have a target on our backs, but for everybody out there, look, you can make a, a, a steel core if you wanted to, if you didn't mind, you know, risking the illegality of it. Um, and then of course, you know, you'll, you'll bond the two together and we'll, we'll tell you how to do that. So essentially, instead of like the penetrator itself, as you have formulated, you are kind of putting out like the bullet, like the whole design of the bullet. So then it's almost like you have an open source development of like a whole new style of projectile. Yes. And people will be able to, you know, experiment with that. Um, so I'm also curious too. Um, so you said nine, I believe in a previous video, you said nine millimeter was your first um, release one with like the CAD files being released with open source, do you have a rough timeline of what that's going to look like? And then two with other calibers, would there at least be like CAD files or plans for other calibers? Cause, it, Cause I'm thinking if this is going to sure. be something that is, um, you know, open sourced, you know, nine millimeter factory ammo is great, but it seems like something people are going to tinker with, especially with other calibers like 10 millimeter. I would personally be excited to see a Dagny style uh, projectile. In. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, so, you know, you ask a little bit about our timeline. Mm-hmm. As always, developing new technology, mm-hmm. new manufacturing techniques, it's really hard to say. But uh, I think we're looking, I think we're looking at starting production uh, by the end of 2021. Hopefully, we'll have it on the shelves in early, uh, y- you know, we'll have it available for retail, I guess I should say. Uh, in early 2022, um, which again, man, it seems like a long time, but new technology just just does take a while to develop. Um, as far as other calibers are concerned, you know, like, I guess maybe even, in fact, I should say, once it's out there, just like we've seen with, uh, with like printed guns, you get that initial release and then you've got, you know, all of the, um, you've got all the variations that people come up with, all of the, 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 um, the transmutations uh, of this stuff. You know, you come out with like one, uh, for instance, like a printed Glock frame, and uh, all of a sudden you see Glock frames come in various different shapes and all, all these different versions. I expect to see that once we open source this thing, even in nine millimeter, people uh, will make different shapes of it. Um, some of them, uh, I, I think, like you specifically want to know uh, a little bit, maybe that are optimized for different barrel lengths mm-hmm. uh, and stuff, stuff like that. We do. We we though also intend to develop uh, the dagger ourselves internally uh, for these for these other cartridges. Five five six. Uh, make a, a, a thirty caliber bullet to go in. You know, three hundred blackout, three hundred eight. Those, those uh, platforms. Um, we we want to hit ten millimeter, and I personally am very excited for for the the possibility. Of 10 the best millimeter. millimeter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, and then I, I think we want to hit 5.7. We want to we wanna hit 5.7 just to show even a cartridge that's designed to penetrate armor, we can penetrate it better. Mm. So, Yeah, definitely very fascinating the idea of having like a whole family of cartridges. You are kind of right. Like, like it's, it's, it's not so much that this is like one specific product of like, okay, here's the Dagny Dagger. You, you get it on the fence. 
but it's like just a whole new family of uh, production of firearms, or not firearms, of ammunition. And I think with the 3D printing revolution, you know, we can go from something of saying, here's a gun, like, here's a Glock, yeah, and here, you know, or here's like a pistol, or here's like a rifle with like a very set idea of this is how you do firearms. And like, this is a cartridge where you have like a case, sure. primer, bullet, where now, you know, with additive manufacturing and all these all these stuff we can have something new and we can have something different i, I think personally this is very exciting I, I should i should also say um this ghost gunner lathe concept mm -hmm. that we're going to work with so that we can open source so you know people can diy the, the dagny dagger uh you know this can also be used for a number of other things um uh like make you can carve carve yourself out some uh, solid copper or, uh bullets if you want to stuff like Fort Scott Munitions makes. Um, you could do, make them out of brass if you want to. This isn't just the Dagny Dagger. I hope that we can kind of kickstart, uh, you know, do-it-yourself uh, ammunition, kind of like Primo bullets, just like 3D printing has done for, uh, and the Ghost Gunner itself have done for, you know, frames and receivers and that kind of thing. I think uh, with this, especially coupled with, um, you know, electrochemical machining, like oh, this yeah. is a full stack freedom technology. Like it's not just now like before where, oh, you have your liberator, like all of the components of firearms production are now being sent to the individual. So Austin, one other uh, interesting thing that thought that came up to me is, so you claimed with the Dagny Dagger and a Glock 17, you had uh, 2,300 feet per second with a 50 gram projectile. Uh, what would that be in foot pounds? Uh, 570. So that's quite impressive in a nine millimeter. But one of the things that occurred to me is you mentioned that there's a slow burning powder and you have unburned powder um, <coughs> at the muzzle. So I'm curious, what would the performance be of the Dagny dagger if you were to load this into say like an eight and a half inch to 10 five barrel or even like a 16 inch barrel yeah. on a PCC? Cause like potentially that might be something that would really, you know, get get some attention the uh the short answer is surely it would be insane and i can't wait to find out now i've got i didn't want to test this in a straight blowback because it's not terribly efficient so i've got a a, a radial delayed cmmg uh, kit uh, on the way to test this but you know they're they're at like 10 weeks uh so i, I couldn't unfortunately have it for for now but um I anticipate it being great because we have all that, that unburned powder. We are using a slow burning powder that maximizes the, the performance. So not as you increase that barrel length, not only are you getting to use, you know, that, that barrel, uh, more barrel, but it actually becomes more efficient the longer the barrel is. Mm. So you'll see you'll see a, a performance increase with the dagger far beyond what you do what you see with like a hundred and fifteen or hundred and twenty four grain bullet, uh, you know, in a in a a long a carbine barrel well austin thank you for coming out here uh to the beautiful city of austin to hang out with us and attend the barrooms and bitcoin con it was uh, fun it's great yeah it was a wonderful time i really you know appreciate all you do i'm really excited not just for the daggy dagger as a project but what atlas arms is doing and the possibilities it's opening so is there anywhere where we can find the daggy dagger or atlas arms and support what you and you guys when your organization is doing yeah, um, to uh, find out more, the best place is our website, atlasarms.org. Mm -hmm. um, you can also follow us on Twitter, which is atlas underscore arms underscore org uh, is our handle. Um, and uh, from our website, uh, you, you can donate to the project. Uh, you can find a link to donate either Bitcoin or, mm -hmm. or um, USD. And uh, we are, as far as the USD, we're hosted by GunDynamics.com, which is a, a crowdfunding site just for the firearms industry. And uh, we definitely appreciate every every donation we get. Uh, this work again, we're, we're a nonprofit organization. We're gifting this back to the people. Everything is supported by your donations. So, uh, you know, the, the the more money we receive, the more you donate, the faster we can get this out to you. Well. Thank you for coming out and um, you know talking with us today. And if you would like to know more about the Commando blog, probably the best place you can find us is commandoblog.com. We also have presences on other social media such as Twitter and YouTube, though given the current uh, climate of censorship, we may not be there tomorrow. If you would like to support our organization, you can find out more uh, directly on the website. And we have a Subscribestar as well as a, as well as a Patreon.